At the end of last year, I made a video about using a pattern mutator for sampling. I thought it had some limitations. Some of you left some great comments on the video suggesting a few things to try. So today we're gonna check them out and see if pattern mutator can become the tool that I really want it to be for sampling. This was one of the suggestions. To keep Dr. Octorex from responding to MIDI notes you don't wanna see, put the instrument inside a combinator and put the player device on the combinator. Then use the key mapping and the combinators programmer to filter out the MIDI notes you don't want the device to see. This is something I forgot you could do in Reason. Clearly I wasn't thinking along the Reason mindset of doing things, but let's give this a go. I think this might work for Dr. Octorex. We'll get a Dr. Octorex loop player, combine that, and then put pattern mutator above it. Let's start with a loop. Well, that's kind of funky. Let's set the combo's range to be F sharp and C1. Now we add something to the pattern mutator, I guess. Well, that's not helping. It's not letting the notes we don't want hit Dr. X, which is, is good because that means we're not getting the random notes that we had last time that would change all the parameters on us. But this still doesn't fix the problem I had, which is I want to be able to determine the entire range of this pattern. If I run this pattern, I don't want any of these notes. I want the, the pattern mutator to be like locked in here. I did have one idea, which will require us resetting the device. I guess we'll go step record and we'll just... Recording all the notes that we had. So what I've just done is recorded in only the notes that this Octorex is triggering. And uh, we'll see what happens if I play that back. All right, I think we're I think we're getting somewhere. What it's doing is it's playing these exact ones, just not in that rhythm. I kind of like that flavor. What if we uh, put a bit of shuffle on it? Hello, this is getting useful all of a sudden. Now what I'm really interested about is if I mutate the pattern, will it keep it within the same note range given that those are the notes that I specified when we created the loop. So let's mix the velocity up. No, we won't. We'll mix the, the density up a little bit, swap, and we'll leave the octave and pitch for now. Let's see what we got. That sucks. I don't really like any of these. <laughs> Um, let's go back to the, the main pattern that we had. I do like this. That's cool. Now what I'm really interested in is if I turn this octave pitch knob, is it going to give me notes that are outside the range? I don't want it to. Let's see what it does. Yeah, cool. Great. This flipping hit. Oh, that's, 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 that's not what I wanted to do. Well, at least we've solved the problem of it not triggering random parameters in Dr. Octorex. So it would seem that the only way to have pattern mutator play with the exact notes you want is to manually input them by step. Then you can have it only trigger the slices in Dr. Octorex. But you have to make sure that when you mutate the pattern, you don't adjust the octave and pitch control at all. Otherwise, it's still going to give you notes outside of your range. I don't like this. This is this is like my one problem with this player. I suppose if you're sampling, it doesn't actually matter if you're using the notes above because you're just playing back slices anyway. Yeah. However, this this is a very uh very awkward way of dealing with it, having to input the notes manually by step. You would also think then if we try the uh the thing that I did last time with a simpler C1 to a C1 to A3. See, those those are the notes that 
it's playing C1 to A3. I'd like to be able to put C1 to A3 into the pattern mutator here. I think as it stands, we'll just have to record them all. Is C1 to A3. drag this new sample in, I don't know, what is my range? Okay, C1 to E2. So, again, I can't just change the range. I've got to go like, clear pattern, step sequence, record in. Is that, is that working? Oh. Okay, that kind of works, yeah. <sighs> All right, let's try, let's try this. Of course, you can also put scales and chords before to constrain your input to a certain key, but then you can still add off key notes with the octave and pitch is in the blue area. Also, if you only want to use the notes that work with something, you can record all of those and then use swapping density. That's that's what we did for uh, the sampling idea, which was a great suggestion. Let's try this. Of course, you can put a scales and chords before to constrain to a certain input. We'll get like a, a piano. We'll combine the piano simply so we can see what's happening. Now I'll chuck a scales and chords player in above the pattern mutator and set it to C minor. But I'm only going to play the white notes in the piano. I'm only going to play in C major. Yeah. Uh, wait, hold on, hold on. This this doesn't solve the problem. Yeah, no, of, of course you can do this. But the issue that I had was if you make a riff that's in C major in pattern mutator and then want to transpose the riff, I still can't think of a way around that using scales and chords first. Hmm, maybe there's not a perfect solution. But I I feel like music theory is not that complicated that we wouldn't be able to have an algorithm of some description that can determine what key you're in. If there's software that can listen to a audio recording and understand what key the piece of music's in and discern what chords are being played, then why can't we have an algorithm? This this is not a complaint about reason. This is just this is just thinking generally about about this kind of thing with music production. Why can't we have an algorithm that is able to tell what key we're in? Personally, I I don't actually care because I understand how keys work, so it doesn't really affect me, but I think it's an interesting <laughs> an interesting thing to think about, nonetheless. Here's the thing about this. If you recorded C major originally, added scales and chords, and then recorded a C minor, it'd be right. For it to be smart, you'd have to still know music theory, since you'd have to define what key you placed it in before it starts transposing. Keys can be weirdly subjective, like D Dorian or C major, but I think, I think you could program an algorithm that examines your pattern and decides what key it is, and then gives it a suggestion, you know, like the computer has looked at the riff that you have played in and determined based on how it knows keys work that it's in D Dorian or C major. And then you can either be like, yeah, I want to I want to go with that starting point, or you can decide to manually override it and set like a different key if you want. Again, I'm I'm not a I'm not a computer programmer, but I feel like given what some other pieces of software can do in terms of key recognition, it, it shouldn't be that hard to create an algorithm or something that is able to look at the notes you put in and then determine what key it thinks it's in. Whether that is D Dorian or C major, which was 
what was suggested as some of the more uh, subjective ones. It would be cool. Yeah, but this this still doesn't help with the problem that I had about pattern mutator transposing incorrectly after you've recorded something in. Ableton Live's scale MIDI plugin. It helps correct the notes into any chosen scale. So we'll record like a C minor riff again. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so let's go MIDI effects scale. Now that's that's um <laughs> that's that's doing exactly the same thing that the scales and chords one was doing. I'm really curious now. I'm really curious whether there is actually a plugin that has a smart understanding of how keys work and can transpose accurately. Because surely, surely someone can program that. If, if any, I'd be very curious to know if anyone's got any ideas of a plugin that could do that. If anyone knows of a plugin that can intelligently suggest what key you're playing in based off the note input and, and it has to be like really intelligent so it has to know whether you'd be writing a D Dorian riff or a C major riff. I think that would be a really valuable tool for people maybe. Oh, I don't know. I'm, I, look, I don't feel like we've achieved very much. Uh, <laughs> but I guess, I guess we have figured out that there is in fact a way to sample accurately using pattern mutator, you just have to manually input every single one of the slices that you might want to use and then not mess with the octave and pitch knob, which I still think is clunkier than it needs to be. I still would like Prison Studios to add a, a range input on pattern mutator. Well, enough of that. Here's here's a here's a beat I've been working on. Uh, leave a comment and, and uh, let me know what you guys think of it. That has been it for this video, guys. If you liked it, give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. I think I will continue to experiment with this plugin and maybe just try using it for what it's supposed to be used for. I don't know. Anyway, I'll catch everybody next time.